presentation uh, given by Professor uh, uh, before. Uh, I would like uh, to give a talk more uh, emphasizing uh, on the importance of the use of the bank filtration system, why uh, we consider that uh, we should take this advantage, which is given practically by the nature, and uh, use uh, in this part, at least in this part of uh, the Pannonian Basin, practically which part of the, the southern part of the basin lies in Serbia, but it crossed to Romania, to Slovakia, Croatia, Slovenia. Um, first, I will talk um, about, I will present the, just the recent outcomes of uh, our uh, river basin management planning, the status of the groundwater bodies and some chemical aspects of the groundwater. And then I will uh, show you briefly one uh, situation uh, from the capital city of Budapest uh, where the bank filtration system is used since more than 100 years. So here you see the quality and quantitative status evaluation uh, carried out uh, last year. The two maps show the porous uh, and the, the shallow porous and the shallow mountainous uh, groundwater bodies. The upper left map shows uh, the quality status and uh, you see quite a lot of uh, groundwater bodies are colored in red color, which means that they are in poor quality status, 24 of the shallow porous groundwater bodies and four of the shallow mountainous groundwater bodies. Why on the um, lower um, right side, uh, the map shows the quantity status of these um, shallow groundwater bodies. Uh, and you can see that yeah, also the quantitative status uh, of these groundwater bodies are, uh, in, uh, are poor. So, um, of course, this uh, claims the attention that, uh, okay, how we deal with uh, the water supply. If we go to the deeper portion in Hungary, we divided uh, the groundwater body, so we have uh, practically three depths. Uh, we have the shallow aquifers, practically uh, until about 30 meters uh, depth, and then we have uh, the cold uh, drinking water uh, uh, aquifers, and then we have also th thermal water, so we have thermal uh, groundwater bodies. You see in the porous aquifers, so the porous groundwater bodies, uh, chemical status is not so bad, but, and it's mostly the poor status is uh, detected in the mountainous areas, but uh, the quantitative status uh, is, uh, is bad, so 10 groundwater bodies were uh, classified in a poorer status. So this means that here in this region, practically between the Danube and Tisza Interflu and in the Great Hungarian Plan, uh, uh, we have already problems uh, with the, mostly with the water balance or also with declining groundwater level. So the, the source of water supply ha has to be resynced. And um, of course, each uh, member state carries out uh, in a practically different way the uh, status evaluation. In uh, Hungary, the status evaluation were carried out based on the guidelines, the EU guidelines, but these do not uh, consider, let's say, um, um, some uh, elements which uh, we considered as a geogenic origin, like the arsenic is in our case, and we have also higher uh, threshold levels for ammonium. And uh, this shows a graph of the ammonium concentration uh, versus depth, and uh, the blue uh, cloud shows uh, the data distribution, and you see that it goes up to few, even few ten uh, milligrams per liter, and the um, pink um, 
symbols mark the median values for uh, different uh, depth uh, intervals, and you see that uh, we are uh, really above the 0.5 uh, milligram per liter uh, threshold level in many cases. So this means that th that uh, uh, cause uh, serious uh, problem in uh, many places of the country when it comes to water treatment. And this means also that uh, makes um, not so uh, cost efficient. If we look at the arsenic uh, concentration distribution, you also see that uh, the arsenic uh, concentration are uh, very high and uh, these are much above the 10 microgram per liter in uh, many places uh, in the groundwater. And the uh, high arsenic concentration can be found uh, both in the shallow uh, flow system and uh, both in the cold and deep regional uh, flow system and uh, also in the th thermal water aquifers. And sometimes the arsenic is uh, connected uh, with boron, or molybdenum, or methane, or ammonium. And what we find uh, is that uh, it, it correlates very strongly with high molybdenum concentration. And if we look at uh, the map of Hungary, here you, you see the arsenic, the boron, ammonium, and fluoride concentration above uh, the drinking water standards. And, and um, you see that uh, practically all, all the, the basins or uh, the, is uh, the groundwater uh, has very, very high concentration uh, of these elements. Lots of uh, the drinking water wells were shut down uh, because uh, the arsenic and uh, the high boron concentration. So what we, we can do is also to, to think about uh, the other uh, potential usage and other potential water supplies. In Hungary, um, beside all the other uh, reorganization of the water sector, also the water works were reorganized. We had a couple of hundreds of water works, uh, let's say two years ago, and recently ha we have about 40. These uh, are big regional uh, water works, uh, and uh, they, uh, they think um, also mostly in transporting uh, water uh, uh, from uh, larger distances and uh, the water purification, the chemical treatment is not so much supported any, anymore in, in Hungary. In the eastern part of Hungary, where uh, the arsenic concentration is the most crucial, uh, the Hungarian and the Romanian government even agreed in um, connecting the water pipelines and the uh, buying water from, from Romania. So that, that was, uh, it was signed in fact a few years ago, but it, uh, the operation started this, this year. Um, but uh, if, if you look at the distribution of the groundwater abstraction in Hungary, you can see that uh, um, 26, about 26% of the abstracted uh, gr uh, groundwater uh, comes from uh, bank filtration uh, systems. Yeah. And uh, if, uh, if you look to this map, uh, the yellow color marks uh, those uh, drinking water protection areas uh, which are um, based on the bank filtration system. You see it is practically along the Danube River. The orangey colors uh, refer to those areas which are already delineated uh, as uh, prospective uh, areas for uh, bank, bank filtration system. They are also mainly along the Danube, but uh, there are some uh, areas along the River Tisza and the Drava. And uh, in Hungary, we have um, 
strict regulation, what is called bank filtration and what, what is not called bank filtration. So minimum 50% of um, the water shall come from surface water and then it's called bank, uh, bank filtrated, the water supplied. So the, um, the areas marked with uh, the purple color uh, is, are, are uh, pr practically operating as uh, water supplies uh, through the bank filtration system, but uh, the amount of water from the surface water is not necessarily 50%. So this is why it's marked in another color. So it's, uh, these areas are along the river uh, Hernad and Ipoy and, uh, and Mura. But practically the operation is, is similar. Uh, just a few facts and figures about uh, the water supply of, of Budapest. Um, so there were inhabitants since, um, of course, millennia. But the first um, signs of um, references to, to water, it comes from the Celtic time, the Celtic inhabitants named Budapest as Ak ink, meaning something similar of rich water. And this was later taken and renamed by the Romans in, uh, from the second century and calling uh, Budapest. It's very, no, at that time, of course, there was no Budapest, so that was the northern side of the hilly region at Akvinkum, which supplied about 60,000 people. But, uh, that water supply came from a uh, car spring practically, and they had this build this uh, nice, uh, still pa partially standing uh, aqueduct. Then, of course, uh, there were different uh, events and fights, and uh, the next documentation comes from the 15th century when uh, the Hungarian kings also ordered the reconstruction and, um, the, of uh, the water and to, to, to provide drinking water for, uh, for the castle and the king. So this was also supplied uh, by captured spring. <coughs> but as the population grew, of course, there were people also living on the plain area, on the pest side. And of course, there were uh, different diseases. And in 1866, there was a very huge cholera disease. And then the city council started to sink to supply uh, the, the city with proper uh, drinking water. So then it invited, um, <coughs> sorry, William Lindley from England in 1868, and who proposed, of course, filtering, which was for that uh, ages and days. And, but uh, the city didn't have uh, enough money, there was no budget, and uh, we also had a um, good uh, driller called Antal Burgemeister, and so they proposed uh, to drill wells. So practically, uh, that's where the actual par parliament exists, it's still, they were operating for this was for more than 100 years. So they designed that for uh, temporary waterworks, but uh, of course the time passed, so they were still in operation. And, they start, as, and the population grew, they started to mix with the Danube water, so of course within five years, they got quality problems, and of course there was a big uh, dispute if, uh, if uh, Lindley built and installed a proper supply and the uh, big discussion and contest at, uh, at the, practically at the same time this George Vane came out with uh, the idea uh, to use uh, bank filtration system even that at that time the whole operation wasn't known at all but he he was an excellent uh, in fact engineer and he was convinced that the natural um, filtration will uh, give a proper quality 
of drinking water for, for the city. And um, slowly, slowly, uh, the idea was, um, was accepted and uh, they, they started to, to build uh, more than 130 years ago the, the first system. And at the moment, um, that's the sole supplier of drinking water of Budapest. Practically, we depend on uh, the bank filtration and the good operation of this system and supplies for more than two million of people and, of course, also in the surroundings. We heard yesterday uh, that also in Serbia, and of course, because the war and also because the industry declines, so now the, the water usage is, is uh, much lower, the same in situation. We didn't have the war, but we, the water abstraction is uh, declining since the 90s and the industry decline. And of course, this went parallel, what we figured out with the increased price of the water. So people are not wasting so much the water. So that's why uh, the water usage went down from about uh, 350 million cubic meter per year to about 166, 67 million cubic meter per year from the beginning of 2000. And um, the operational territory of the Budapest Water Works runs from the northern part of the city, from the St. Andre Island to the southern part of the city, which is the Chapel Island, and uh, it is uh, proved to be a cost-effective and environmental-friendly um, water uh, abstraction. And of course, uh, the treated wastewater is discharged back to the Danube. And I will show you just uh, three slides of, about uh, the central park uh, of the operational territory of Budapest. This, uh, this shows practically the, the yellow contour lines are the drinking water protection areas. And uh, that's the middle of the city and the northern part, which goes up to, to the St. Andre Island. This is the main uh, aquifer part, and, uh, and here are those wells which practically uh, provide the, the drinking water, the most of it. And um, we did uh, some modeling, so my colleague did some uh, 3D ground uh, flow pass and transport modeling. Uh, um, here you see the, the market island, and uh, on the left side, that's the so-called Buddha oil log, is the, practically the, the second um, the drinking water, water uh, supplier of, of, of the city. And um, by the Hungarian law, we defined the, the 20 days, a half year, five year, 50 years flow passes, because uh, it's, in, it's important regarding uh, the potential pollution sources. And here you see that practically in 20 days, the, the, the water reached the wells, and then um, half year, five years, and um, 50 years. So uh, what is important to know that we, we are in the middle of, uh, of the city. Oh, I don't know where to show. And uh, practically next to the parliament, and it's also a very densely populated area, a touristic site, so there are lots of threats, but um, until now we, we didn't have uh, problems uh, with the quality of the water. And uh, of course, I could talk uh, about the chemical composition, there's lots of things, but just to, one figure about the, uh, oxygen and deuterium uh, isotope distribution here, you see that practically the w water um, uh, is uh, 95, 98% uh, percent, uh, coming from the Danube. And in the northern part, uh, where I show you in the map, it's uh, the ballpark two water supply unit as uh, we go further uh, 
to uh, to to the um, upright. Uh, so then there we have higher um, ratio of back, background water. There we had also problems with the water chemistry, of course, and some um, higher concentration of nitrates were detected. And uh, due to that, that part of, of the water work uh, was even uh, shut down. But th this is not a typical uh, situation. So usually where we have the wells uh, along the, the river and not further in, inland, then the, the water uh, quality is, uh, is really good and doesn't need any treatment. So we heard yesterday that the, uh, the presentation uh, in the, the Dutch uh, company already taking out all the major and trace elements from the water. I hope that I will not have to live in that world when everything is taken out from the water and then people decide that what we need, what we human needs. So, I hope that we, we can still rely on, uh, on our natural system and, of course, help and enhance the operation and improve with our knowledge. So some concluding remarks that uh, um, it is uh, proved to be an efficient uh, source for good quality and uh, sufficient drinking water supply even in densely populated areas. Uh, spatial attention, of course, should be paid uh, to ma uh, maintaining the quality and m morphology of uh, the riverbed and to protecting the ultrafiltration properties of the riverbanks. Bank filtration uh, system uh, can guarantee drinking water supplies, not just to, to avoid the overexploitation of groundwater, uh, but to handle uh, water scarcity and also in case of um, anthropogenic contamination or in the case of groundwater with high uh, natur natural background levels. And um, I want also to mention again that, that the supply of potable water from uh, the alluvial aquifer of the Danube uh, can also be an economically realistic uh, option as uh, has been uh, stated in the National River Basin Management Plan of Hungary. So, thank you for your attention. Thank you.